before we get into today's episode. Here is a list of our sponsors. Thank you for your support. If you want to support the channel, we have t-shirts and other merch right there in the description. Just hit the link. Before the echo up, the solitude, the, the zigzag lightning, play the games in the universe. I know before there was a win or where, or a thin or there. I know, I know before the foundation of the earth was laid. Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Pastor Bonner speaking, and again I say to each and every one of you, praise the Lord. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, greeting you live from Solomon's Temple, 2341 East Seven Mile Road, here in the heart of the Motor City, bringing you another message from the Word of God in hopes that it will be a blessing to you and to yours. For I am sure the Lord would have me to be a blessing to each and every one of you. And that I will attempt to do, because that is the purpose of my being here, and that is the purpose of my being born into the world, is to be a blessing to someone that is looking for those blessings promised by our Lord Jesus Christ and those blessings that you are capable of pursuing yourself. We have had a beautiful class this evening at 6.30 over at the Last Word Bible and Book Store. Uh, that's why we had a class tonight and the power of positive thinking was our lesson tonight at the Bible and bookshop and we had a packed house there and of course we're looking forward to another lesson tomorrow evening at 6.30 in the evening and it will last uh, a little less than an hour on tomorrow. Uh, we were a little over time tonight but we will try to uh, I'll be in class at 6.30 sharp, all the students who were there tonight, uh, and we'll be back tomorrow night. All right. Uh, we're talking about uh, positive thinking. We're talking about improving uh, your self, improving your personality, improving your life, improving your lot. Um, we're talking about changing your life from the negative to the positive. We're talking about causing you to believe in yourself and to believe that you're able to do things uh, that will guarantee you the blessings of Jesus Christ and success. And we're going to use a scripture tonight that deals with prosperity and, and how to prosper. Uh, in the third epistle of John, in the book of Genesis, uh, turn to the third epistle of John, turn to Genesis 24 and 40, and turn to Deuteronomy 29 and 9, and Second Chronicles 20 and 20. Uh, while you're getting those scriptures in focus, uh, you know, there are ways and means by which one must prosper. And, and that's the word we are using tonight. Prosper uh, means uh, being successful. Being su successful as a child of God being su successful as a person, being successful in every endeavor that you venture into. Prosper. The Lord wants you to prosper. 
spiritual prosperity, material prosperity, financial prosperity. God wants you to prosper. That's the word of God. And if God wants us to prosper, then why aren't we prospering uh, if he wants us to? And it is a biblical fact that it is God's will uh, that his people prosper. Now, some nations are prosperous, uh, more prosperous than others uh, in the world today. And it has always been since the beginning of time, I suppose, uh, at least to my knowledge, since the beginning of the recording of history, one nation has prospered above another nation. Uh, one nation have ascended to the height of the clouds while another nation remain at the base of the mountain. Uh, God has never permitted all nations of the world to prosper at the same time. I don't know why God operates that way, but he does. He has never permitted Africa and Europe uh, to all prosper at the same time. One was uh, prospered above the other. Uh, Asia, uh, America, South America. Um, there are those who go above others uh, for a certain period of time. They prosper because God prospers that nation above another nation or that person above another person. It has always been this way, that one person rises above another. Uh, is it the ingenious of the person? Is it the blessings of God upon the person? What is it that projects one person above another person, that one person is successful and another person isn't successful? And yet, within life, there is that capacity for every man to succeed in some way or other so that he can be a blessing and to the multitudes who are less fortunate than that person is. And tonight we're going to deal with that word, uh, prosper. We go to Genesis uh, 24 and 4. Uh, and he said unto me, the Lord go before the Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with thee and prosper thy ways and thou shalt take a wife for my son of my kindred and of my father's house. All right. Uh, uh, God is going to send an angel to prosper someone. Now, you think about that. There is an angel for prosperity reasons. There is an angel that the Lord will send uh, to see to it that you are prosperous, uh, successful in the thing that you are about to do. That you will achieve those things. You will accomplish those things. Now, when the Lord sends an angel with thee to, to prosper you, uh, what else can God do? Now, it's up to you to get busy and, and call upon all of the talent there is within you and allow God to bless you in ways that you have never been blessed before. But you've got to do something. Uh, for God to prosper you. God will not prosper a lazy man, a lazy woman. God will not prosper on that kind of a person because uh, they're not doing anything. Because pros prospering a person means that the person is going to be successful in ventures into business or uh, other uh, aspects of life. 
the Lord is going to prosper you as a husband and as a wife. The Lord is going to prosper your children. The Lord is going to prosper uh, the family. He's going to cause the family to prosper. Now, uh, these are things that God has committed himself to do for people who have committed themselves to him and have also committed themselves to a developing mind uh, who have a, um, a positive attitude about life. That he's going to send you someone to help you to prosper. I'm going to send someone to aid you to prosper and to see to it that you're successful in what you are about. Now that's beautiful when, because when God sends someone with you, you can be assured that it's going to come out the right way. All right, now we're talking about our, um, our prospering. Deuteronomy 29 and 9. Keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them that ye may prosper in all that ye do. That ye may prosper in all that ye do. Now note, not in some things you do, but in all things. That ye may prosper in all things that ye do. Now isn't that beautiful? I say it is. Uh, God wants every one of you to prosper. Every child of God, God wants you to prosper. How much prosperity can I have, God? He says that I want you to prosper in all that you do, in everything that you do. I want you to prosper in it. Now, who could ask for more than that? If that doesn't get you up off of the negative uh, thoughts and negative attitudes and um, and get you moving, I don't know what what will. Uh, the Lord is going to prosper you, so he you got to give him something to bless, something that he can prosper, more than just sitting out holding your hands. You got to give him something to prosper. S start something that he can bless something that he can put his approval on, something that God can work out for you, something that God can show you his mighty power, that he is with you, that he is going to prosper you. Now, I want you to note, now, this was, this is written in Deuteronomy, which means uh, the children of Israel is now at this point somewhere in the wilderness, on their way to the promised land, of course, the Lord never prospered them to reach the promised land. They did not prosper uh, because they rebel in the most negative way possible. I talked about that in the early um, lessons, how that uh, the Lord uh, rejected the people because of their negative attitudes and uh, that backward thinking and feelings about life, and their wishing uh, that they had died in Egypt, their wishing that they could go back to Egypt and not go ahead to the promised land where the Lord can bless them and where the Lord can prosper them. The Lord said, I cannot bless you in Egypt. I will not bless you in Egypt. I will not prosper you in Egypt. And the Lord didn't let them prosper in Egypt. The children of Israel became slaves to the Egyptians and remained slaves for 400 years to the Egyptians because the Lord refused to prosper the children of Israel in Egypt. He wanted them out of Egypt. I'm going to prosper you, but it will not be in Egypt. I will prosper you in the promised land beyond the Jordan River. That's where your prosperity lies. But they never reached uh, the territory so that God could prosper them. Now, if God promises to prosper you, why don't you move? Why don't you get up and, and move yourself 
and go to the place where he can prosper you, where he can enrich your life, where he can enlighten you and show you things to do and uh, things to achieve so that you can be that blessed individual that the Lord wants you to be. All right. Now, he promises to prosper them in all that they do. All that they do. I'm going to prosper you in everything that you do. And I believe that. As a matter of fact, I know it. The Lord will prosper you. The Lord will prosper you. You remember the words of Solomon, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. Those are beautiful words, and they're true. They're, they're so true. Uh, now, the reason why Israel couldn't prosper is because they were a negative people. They didn't believe anything. Uh, they didn't believe anything positive. Uh, the uh, positive thinking that belonged in their lives. And God had done enough for them to motivate them and cause them to think positive. But they just couldn't bring themselves to think positive. They just kept continuously complaining, 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 complaining about what little they had. But in spite of the fact that little they had, it was only for the willingness. And they didn't need to spend no 40 years in the wilderness. They didn't need to spend 40 days in the wilderness. They could have gone on through the wilderness to promised land. All they had to do was to think positive. That's all they had to do, think positive. Every step of the way, think positive. Not negative and fall apart and start fighting with each other, fighting against each other, fighting against Moses, fighting against Aaron, fighting against this one, that one, and the other. The power struggle came into the midst. And everybody wanted to be the chief. Nobody wanted to be an Indian. All because the people lost uh, their positive thoughts about God and about themselves. We are not able, we are not able to conquer these people. We are not able to achieve what God say we can achieve. We are not able. We are not able. able. Not able is dead. Dead. But you just kept re resurrected. Not able. We are not. We are not. We are not able. Don't ever say that you're not able. You should always say, by the grace of God, with God's help, I will succeed. I shall succeed. And I will succeed. Let that be your tea in the morning, your coffee in the morning. Let it be your coffee for lunch and for, and, 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 and for dinner. Drink it. Drink it every day. Drink it every day. I will succeed. I'm going to succeed. God is going to help me to succeed. And if you drink that every day, and let it get into your bloodstream, let it get in, into your character, into your personality, you'd be surprised to know how changed you will become and prosper in all the things that you are about. For this is the will of God, that the Lord keep thee and bless thee and lift up his countenance upon thee and to prosper thee. That's God's will for you. God has willed that to you. Look at Second Chronicles, uh, chapter 20 and 20. And they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah. O ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God. So shall ye be established. Believe in his prophets, and so shall ye prosper. There are two words, establish and prosper. Establish and prosper. Listen to those beautiful words. Now this is what the Lord is saying to his people. I'm going to establish you. I'm going to prosper you. If you believe the words of the prophet, if you believe my servant, 
do what he tell you to do. Do what my servant tell you to do. For he's going to tell you things that are going to prosper you spiritually, financially, and otherwise. Listen to him. And so shall you prosper. You take some people, they don't listen to nobody. Prophets, preachers, nobody else. How do you expect to prosper? Because we need the blessings of God upon our lives so that we can prosper in all of the things that we are about. Look at the first or the third epistle of John. Uh, the elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Even as thy soul prospereth. Now, Apostle John uses the word prosper. It's all over the Bible. It's all over the Bible. It is God's will that his people prosper. And be in good health. God wants you to be in good health. He wants you to be healed in your body. He wants you to be healed in your spirit. He don't want you wounded and sick. He wants you to be well. This is what God wants for his children. This is what he has willed to his children. And this is what each and every one of you uh, should be in pursuit of. And in pursuit of of, of, of prosperity through the righteousness of God calls for a positive thinking individual. Now, there are more sinners who are positive in their thoughts than there are Christians. It, it seems to me that Christians become lazy in their thinkings. And instead of continuing in their pursuit of higher goals, they drop out and put everything on God and say, the Lord, you do it. Lord, you do it. Lord, you do it. Do this, Lord. Do this, Lord. Do this, Lord. They don't do anything anymore. They just put everything on the Lord and say, Lord, you do it. Lord, you do it. I guess after a while, you'll be asking the Lord to drive the car. He blessed you and gave it to you. I guess you'll be asking him to drive it so you can sit back in the back seat and just ride back and just let God drive the car for you. There's something that you have to do as a person. And it's important to you that you do it. And that is, be positive, think positive, be creative, be energetic, be purposeful in life, and be a pursuer of higher goals. And uh, you'd be surprised how this will turn your life around and cause you to be a progressive saint. A progressive saint. One that is prospering Spiritually, one that is prospering financially, one that is prospering academically, one that is prospering in wisdom and knowledge and understanding, in every way you are being prospered by the Lord and by the wisdom and by the faith and confidence that you have in yourself. There is a segment of our society that is absolutely crippled because they don't believe in anything. You see, you have to, you have to believe in something. This is, this is life, you see. You have to believe in something uh, outside of yourself and, 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 and within yourself. You have to believe. Now, I use some words tonight that, that I'm going to throw at you. And one of them is ideology. Now, uh, ideology is a systematic body of concepts. It's a systematic body of concepts. Uh, something that is that you're theorizing with a systematic body of concept, uh, especially about human life, uh, culture. Now. When I use the word ideology, I'm talking about the ideology of a person, of a nation, 
a, a let's look at the, a nation first. Uh, there has to be an ideology of a nation. That nation has an ideology, uh, which is a, a concept, especially about human life and culture. Uh, there is an uh, Russia has an ideology. All right, they have a what is called the socialist system, uh, the socialist system of the world, and they believe that, that their ideology is the best for society today. And, and it's, it's that communist um, of, uh, ideology that they are trying to forge upon the world. In all parts of the world, Russia is trying to uh, project its ideology uh, over the rest of the world. America is trying to do the same. She have an ideology. We have a total different system of ideology from that of Russia, from that of Japan, from that of China. All of these nations have an ideology. Africa. Uh, all nations have an ideology. It is something that the forefathers developed for our belief, something to pull us up uh, to a height uh, that is unattainable without an ideology. You see, you've got to have an ideology. An ideology gives you something to motivate you, something to stimulate you, something to pull you up to a certain height. Without that ideology, it is impossible. It is impossible. You've got to have an ideology. And that ideology pulls you up, strengthens you, makes you a powerful force as an individual or as a nation of people. As an individual, you need an ideology within yourself. What do you tell yourself when you wake up in the morning? Some of you, when you wake up in the morning, and you feel like going back to sleep and never waking up, because that's what the day means to you. It is the most, it is the most dreadful thing to face tomorrow for some of you. You, you don't want to face tomorrow because you know what you're going to be looking at. You know what you're going to feel. You know how you're going to feel. You know how uh, you're going to complain. You know how you're going to uh, be miserable and how uncomfortable you're going to be. So you'd rather sleep through it. And then there's another person. Can't wait until the daybreak. And that's me. You know, every morning before day breaks, my eyes fly open and... and uh, Oh, I presume that must be around 4 o'clock in the morning. My eyes fly open. And not too long after my eyes fly open, I'm, I'm lying there meditating and praying. After a while, I hear the chirping of the sparrows. I hear the other birds whispering. And, and up to that awful morning that you wish you could go back to sleep and never wake up. Too many of you are in that trap. Too, too many of you are in that situation. You don't believe anything. You don't believe that anything can change. You don't believe that anything will change. You don't believe it's possible to change. And you, you carry this with you. You, 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 you've sown it in the minds of other people. Sometimes one pessimistic person damages the lives of, uh, of 50 people, of 10 people, of 5 people because of the pessimistic views of the individual. In the real. You damage your children, you damage your wife, you damage your husband, you damage everybody. Everybody is hurt, crippled, because of you. Because of the lack of faith and trust and belief that you have in yourself. You have no uh, uh, inner convictions about yourself other than that I'm a miserable failure. I'm a dismal failure. And this is expressed to your children. This is expressed to your wife. This is expressed to your husband. This is expressed to everybody. Now,
how clean the house is, no matter how good a wife she is, she receives no compliment uh, from her husband. That destroys a woman. It destroys a woman. Everybody needs to be complimented. Everybody needs to have something good said to them about them, and et cetera, et cetera. And that's why uh, 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 Jesus Christ said good things to people. When he come into your life and fill you with the Holy Ghost, he don't bring no bad uh, uh, stuff, no cold uh, um, yesterday mashed potatoes into your life. He bring all fresh things, joy, peace, happiness, and contentment. Because he knows what it takes to keep you motivated, keep you moving on. This is what he brings into your life. He brings the peace, the happiness, and the contentment. He brings the will to live, not to die. He puts a press in your heart, in your soul and mind, that keeps you pressing on and, and keep you fighting on. This is what Jesus brings in your life. Now, suppose that every one of us took this into the life of another person. Every one of us. Take this kind of a joy to our wives, to our children, and to our husbands. Suppose we took this. Our whole world would change. Our homes would change. Our society would change. But no, we rather take misery and we peddle it all day. We peddle it all day. We just peddle misery to the children, misery to the wife, misery to the husband. We are just a dismal, miserable piece of flesh. Simply because our esteem is lost. We have no self-esteem. Our feelings about our, ourselves is, is so dismal, is, is so pessimistic, until we are miserable. So many of God's folks are miserable. Christians, miserable folks, miserable folks. Christians haven't got no business being miserable. Christians are supposed to be happy folks, glad folks, excited people. That's what a Christian is supposed to be, not a miserable person. You're not supposed to contribute to the miseries of other people. You're supposed to contribute happiness to other people. Let them know how you feel about them, how much you love them, how much you appreciate them. And so, we have people today who have wheelbarrows full of misery. And they are rolling that wheelbarrow right up and down the block, dumping something on my house, dumping something on your step, dumping something on somebody else's step. Well, I just step over this stuff myself. Praise the Lord. I will not let no one dump on my doorstep uh, this miserable stuff. Praise I'm too glad to see another day. I'm so happy to get my eyes open in the morning, and I don't want to sleep late. There is too much outside of the house to do. The day is too beautiful. God has blessed me to see another day. Let's rise and shine, for the day has come. And praise the Lord. Let's get something done to the glory and praise of God and for the betterment of humanity. That's the way I feel. Praise God. Sometimes I'm tired when I wake up in the morning, but my tiredness takes second place because I'm so glad to face another day. I'm so happy to get out there and start pitching and accomplish something and achieve something because that's what's important to life. So look at the word ideology. Look at the word ideology. A system, a body of concepts, especially about a human life and culture. That's very important now. That's very important as an individual because groups, group therapy, when people come together, they can, they can speak things to each other to help each other, to undergird each other, and, and to encourage each other. But you need to understand how to encourage yourself. How to keep yourself motivated, keep yourself pressing on. Praise the Lord. And then there was another word that I want to throw at you tonight, and that's philosophy. Philosophy. What is your philosophy? Everybody needs a philosophy. What is philosophy, Pastor Potter? Philosophy is also a pursuit uh, 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 of wisdom. Are a search for general understanding of values and realities. Uh, everyone needs a philosophy. You need a philosophy. You, you, you need to have a purpose in life. You need to have pursuits in life. 
searching for general understanding and values and realities. You, you, you want this. You need this. You need a philosophy. You, you don't want to wake up every morning to, oh, God, uh, not, 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 a, not today. <laughs> you don't want to wake up to that every day. You don't, you don't want to wake up to complaining every day. You need a philosophy. When you wake up tomorrow morning, what are you going to say? You're going to look in the mirror and say, good morning, Pastor Bonner. Uh, and if your name is James, you're going to look in the mirror and say, good morning, James. Uh, this is the day the Lord made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Go talk to yourself. I mean, if somebody hear you, so what? So what? Uh, talk to yourself. Get yourself all goofed up uh, to go out and face the world. You need a philosophy. You need a, a, a mannerism that you're going to follow every day. Every day I'm going to follow this. I'm going to say the same thing to myself every day. I'm going to prove to myself. I pray that the things are going to change. And if things don't change, then I'm going to change so that the things don't bother me. I'm going to get through this day and I'm going to enjoy this day. I'm not going to sit here and cry my eyes out. I'm not going to sit here and pull my hair. I'm not going to sit here and grow old. I'm not going to sit here and get wrinkles in my face. I'm going to get out and face the day. Praise the Lord. And my philosophy is this is the day the Lord has made. And I'm going to rejoice and be glad in this day because God has willed that I prosper this day. He has sent an angel to bless me today. He has sent an angel to prosper me, me, prosper me today. And I am going to be blessed today, absolutely and positively. Now, what are you going to do with your life? What are you going to do with your life? It is God's will that you prosper. It is God's will that you prosper. And be successful. As a wife, as a husband, as children, as a business person, as a person that is in pursuit of goals and ambitions, a person who's trying to reach a certain mark, make a certain determination and, and to achieve certain things uh, before I reach the age of 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or 70. You see, I, I've set goals for myself. I'm 64 years old. When I reach the age of, of uh, 70, Praise the Lord. I, I hope to be around. I don't plan to check out. I hope to be around. And, and, but I got goals that I want to reach uh, by the time I am uh, 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 seven years old, 70 years old. And I would share them with you, but I don't want you to laugh at me. Uh, I would share these goals with you because they're exciting. They're exciting to me. I mean, they're, they're absolutely positively exciting goals. Praise the Lord. And, and, and uh, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to share this one with you because I know you're going to laugh at me, but I don't care. Uh, you, know, you ever heard of a, of a person, uh, of people that are millionaires? You ever heard of them? I know you have. I, I think you've dreamed of being one yourself. Well, uh, that's one of my dreams. Now, I don't love money, and, and uh, I don't care that much about it. I don't even like to count the stuff. But you know what I want to be uh, before I reach the age of 70? I, I want to be a millionaire. That's right. I want to be a millionaire. And I might raise my sights. I might just decide I want to be a billionaire by the time I reach the age of 70. All right. You know, Pastor Bonner, that's carnal. No, it's not. That's no, not. The Lord promised to prosper me. That's what he promised to do. He promised to prosper me. In everything I do, he promised to send an angel to prosper me. That's right. And by the time I get that, now that's on the natural side. That's on the natural side. On the spiritual side, what do you hope to achieve by the time you're 70, Pastor Bonner? I want to be the best preacher. There is. By the time I get 70 years old, I want to be the best preacher. I want to win more souls than anybody else by the time I'm 70 years old. By the time I'm 70 years old, uh, there'll be so many hundreds and thousands of people here in Solomon's temple, I might have to build another temple. How about that? That's what I want on the spiritual side. I want all of my children 
to be prosperous. I want all my young people, all my my, my fathers and, and wives and uh, husbands, I want them all to prosper as I prosper. I want them to prosper because I plan to prosper because the Lord has promised to prosper me and he is doing it. He is prospering me. And everything I do, God prospers me. I've never done nothing yet that the Lord didn't prosper me in it. That's why I set my goals on the natural side and on the spiritual side. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to be that millionaire by the grace of God. Not that I need to be a millionaire. I just want to be it. That's all. Uh, I believe the Lord's going to grant it to me. I, I want to know how I feel to be a millionaire, number one. Uh, I want to show you uh, that you can be a millionaire and be saved and, and you didn't have to cheat and steal to be a millionaire. That's what I want to show you. And then on the spiritual side, I want to be a millionaire on the spiritual side. I want to be rich, spiritually rich. I want to, I want to be the richest man on earth when it comes to the spiritual thing. I don't want any person to be richer than I am in the Lord. Nobody. I don't want anyone to be ahead of me. I want to be at the head of the class. You say, Pastor Bonnie, you want too much. No, I didn't. I'm just telling you some of the things I want. Some of the things that I told you I want you to fall out of the chair. But I want them just the same. Will the Lord prosper me? Yeah, he's going to prosper me. Watch it. He's going to prosper me because I'm going to live for him. I'm going to walk before him. I'm going to honor him. Praise the Lord. I'm going to praise him. And I'm going to be that servant that he has called me to be in these last and evil days. All right. What are you going to do? Are you going to be in pursuit of your goals? Are you going to be that successful person that you want to be? All right. Be in my class tomorrow evening at 6.30. Be there at 6.30 sharp. Of course, I start teaching at 6.30. And all the last one hour tomorrow. Praise the Lord. I want you to be there because I want to share some things with you. I told the class tonight, if I give you these lessons for 10 days, your life will never be the same again. I guarantee that. Your life isn't going to be the same again. If you drink in the things that I'm going to give you in the next 10 days in this class so you can ask me questions and get answers, your life isn't going to be the same again. Because I'm going to put some of the stuff that's in me, in you, and become, so that you can become a positive thinker the way I am, and more so, more positive than I am. That's what I want for you. And I'm going to share it with you. And the Lord's going to bless you to receive it. Remember, remember these words that I read to you tonight. Remember these words. And they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of, uh, of Tekoa. And as they went forth, uh, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall you prosper. Now, I know I'm a prophet, and I know I'm a preacher. And I know the things I say will prosper in your life. The things that I share with you, they're going to prosper you. They're going to bless you. They're going to bless you. Believe his prophets, and so shall ye prosper. So shall ye prosper. Now, I dare you to believe the things I'm telling you. I dare you to believe them. That's right. I double dare you. Because if you believe them, you're going to prosper. You're going to prosper as a saint. You're going to prosper as a person in business. You're going to prosper as a person in pursuit of a, a good domestic life, a good marriage with you and your husband, uh, a, a good life as a single person, and looking forward uh, to true companionship, you can prosper. You will prosper. Absolutely. So be in these classes, and I'll assure you that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to bless you real good. All right? Bless you now. I could go on and on, but I, I need to make a couple of announcements. And those of you who would like to ask Pastor Bonner a question, call 893-1230 is the number to call. And... I will attempt to answer it for you. Or, uh, if there's something that you would like to say to Pastor Bonner, I'd be glad to hear it. 
And uh, let's see here now. Uh, don't forget the revival is going on here at Solomon's Temple. And we're asking prayer for the Gilbert family uh, that has death in the family, the Gilbert family. And the family hour is tomorrow between 7 and 8 at the Queen's Temple Funeral Home, uh, 1900-1 Conant. And the funeral is at Queen's Temple, 11 a.m. Saturday morning. Uh, that's the Gilbert family. Keep them in your prayers. Remember, uh, Pastor Bonner attempts to be a blessing to you and yours, not just from the pulpit and not just on radio and television. Uh, the Queen's Chapel Funeral Home was designed by me. It is one of the most beautiful uh, chapels in the city of Detroit. And if you go there and see it, you'll know that Pastor Bonner is not exaggerating. It is true. Here again, the things that I do, the Lord prosper those things. And he blesses those who bless me because I am his servant. And I know that I am. And I try to share his blessings with every one of you. So when there is bereavement in your family, call the Queen's Chapel Hill home. Write the number down and make note of it. And we will respond to you. We will. And I will try uh, through the mercies and grace of Jesus Christ to be a comfort to you and a blessing to you in the time of your bereavement and not just from the pulpit only. This is something that I wanted from the Lord. I, uh, the reason why I designed that funeral home because I want my children that the Lord take the glory and my friends and, and those of you out there in the land of Rita, whether you're a member of Solomon's Temple or not, I want to be a blessing to you even in your sorrow, not just in life but also in death in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So call the Queen's Tap of Funeral Home, 893-1970, 893-1970, when you have death in your family or someone that you know, call that number, 893-1970. And also, the bookstore that we just opened, the last word, Bible and Bookshop. Uh, we have books that will absolutely, positively bless you. If you're, if you're a member of the clergy looking for certain kinds of literature, we have it. Uh, we have uh, literature for single people, for married people, uh, for people who need motivation, uh, people who need to think positive. We, we have a selection of books in the theology area, the homiletical area, Bibles, dictionaries, concordances, everything that you need. You can find it here at the Last Word Bible and Bookshop, uh, just across the street from Solomon's Temple. So when you need literature, uh, all of our literature isn't in, but a, a, a whole lot of it is there. And there is some yet to come. But you'll find what you're looking for. And if we don't have it, you tell us, and we get it for you. And support your community stores, not just the Bible Bookshop, all the community stores, stores in your community, support them. And don't take all your money out to Gross uh, Point, outlying areas. Spend some money in Detroit. Be a blessing to people in the city of Detroit. All right, bless you now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Pastor Mark. You're on the air. God bless you. I just called to let you know that um, what you're speaking about, really what the saints of God need. And basically I called to let you know that what you're talking about, it really brings the sunshine out, you know, in the saint's life. I can't speak for everybody else, but I'm, I'm speaking about my life. It's, you know, just like, just what I need, you know, it, it encourages me and it motivates me. You know, and I'm truly going to wake up in the morning thanking the Lord uh, for waking me up and believing exactly what you said because I know that it's going to better my life and it's going to work in the near future. So I just want to let you know that you're doing a very good job. Bless you, and thanks for sharing that with us. Welcome. Bless you, too. Bless you now. Praise the Lord. You're on there. Praise the Lord, Pastor Long, sir. Um, okay, I had an idea. I've been had it about a uh, go-kart, Christian go-kart place, and also a piece and sub shop connected to it. And, okay, now I don't have a job or anything. So I was wondering, should I look at that realistically about, you know, trying to, to still go after it? Keep going after push out for it. Sure, absolutely. 
Okay, now. You see, dreams, dreams don't, some dreams don't come to tomorrow. They come true next month, come true next month, next year, a year after next. But you don't destroy the dream. Right. You pursue the dream until the dream can become a reality. Okay. Would, would you also pray for me that I wake up this new morning with fire, you know? <laughs> push out the fire for, you know? All right. Wake up tomorrow morning the way I do. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm going to say right there. <laughs> okay. Bless you now. Well, thank you so much, sir. All right. <laughs> wake up with a... With a gold mine, <laughs> wake up with peace in your heart and your soul. There's too much to accomplish <laughs> to lay in the bed. Praise the Lord and be miserable. Get out of there. Face tomorrow and tell yourself, I'm going to turn the world upside down today. Instead of having the world sit on me, I'm going to sit on top of it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Pastor Bonnie. You're going to be glad to hear what i got to say. All right. Do um, you remember, um, okay, I told you, in, uh, I called you the night before last, something like that, and I told you that I felt like I'm in suicide. Yeah. And I was, I went through so much that night. I even talked to Sister T, and she talked to me until I got sleepy. And um, then I called you the next night and told you about it. And I know it's true that everything, something bad happened, something good come out of it. Uh -huh. So I'm 17 years old, and I didn't have a co-signer, and I got a no alliance in 1983 today, and I am really happy. You still and, feel like jumping off a bridge? Oh, no. <laughs> uh -huh. No, no. I, I really feel good because you, everybody said, how can you do it? I said, go to Pastor Barnett, you can do anything. <laughs> yeah, but I said, there is a God. I don't care what no. And he's a good guy. He's real, isn't he? Oh, yes, he is. He can turn your world around, too, Kate. Yes, he can. Absolutely. Oh. And thanks for sharing that with us. All right, thank you. Have a good night. All right. Praise the Lord. Yes, Pastor Bonnie, I just wanted to thank you for the self-esteem lectures that you've been giving us. And I talked to my colleagues and everything at work, and I was telling them that they had to listen to these classes because by the time you get finished talking, I mean, you, I told them, I said, you will feel like you can fly a plane without even taking lesson one. <laughs> and it's real, that's really how you make us feel, and I'm really glad that the Lord laid it on your heart to give us these lectures. Bless you now. Bless you. Now, don't try to fly that plane, yeah? <laughs> Okay. I know how you feel, though. Yeah. Anything. Bless you now. Good night. Have a good night. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing to feel good about yourself. It's a wonderful thing to feel good about yourself. You can turn the world upside down. You don't need to let the world turn you upside down. Turn it upside down. Positive thinking. Positive thinking. Positive thinking will do the job every time. Remember what God said? I read to you last night. The Lord said, as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. Everything I think, says the Lord, is going to happen. That's the power that each individual has. You have, the power, you have the power to think positive. And what you think, all you have to do is keep thinking it, keep pursuing it, keep believing it. It will get in your bloodstream. It will get in your bones. It will get in your character. It will become a part of your inner beings, your inner life, to the extent that nothing can rob you of a purposeful, purposeful life, a life of purpose, a life of living, a life of joy, a life of achieving. Every one of you, God bless you. I love you. Have a good night tonight now. Lord Jesus Christ, bless everyone listening to this broadcast. Bless them as only you can, and I will praise you, and I will magnify you, and I will glorify you in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, my Lord, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you. This is Pastor Bonner speaking. Shalom, shalom. You have been listening to Pastor Bonner and...